Hello and welcome to part 5 of the Woodson IDE tutorial. This time I'm going to talk about workspaces, projects, folders and how to use them best. Um, as stated in the previous tutorials, everything in Eclipse is stored within a workspace. A workspace is nothing but a folder. The real content within the folder is stored in projects, which in turn are only folders. The Woodson IDE plugin comes with a basic extension which allows you to right click and via the context menu open the file system folder associated with any project or folder. So if I click open folder here you can see the full path and you see there is a workspace part and the name of the project. What you also can see there is a folder rainbow within. If I open it here ah, there's a folder rainbow within. This open folder context menu entry does not only work for folders by themselves, it only works for files. In this case the containing folder is opened in a separate uh, explorer window. Eclipse keeps track of all files and folders and the actual resources on the file system. Um, if they get out of sync you will be notified. What does that mean? If I have a text file here I can now edit it and save it. And if I open, do the same in the corresponding folder by using Notepad, save and close, and I close it here, it detects that it has changed on the file system and if I want to reload those changes. I say yes. Especially if it is closed, no editor is open, and you do the same thing, you change it here, And if you double click it, Eclipse tells you that the resource is out of sync. So now you can press F5 on that file or you can do the same for a complete subtree in your project. So I press F5 and it gets synced again. This is important if you create some script or whatever which modifies your files. Uh, for example by compiling or a linker and you double click them in Eclipse and you wonder why you get this uh, it is out of sync error message you simply press F5 and then it is in sync again. Uh, besides that automatically if you have the compiler creating output in the source folder so if I specify the compiler should create the output here and I say compile you see that now the executable is automatically added here and the folder has been refreshed. So this is part, this automatic refresh is part of the Woodson IDE compile plugin, but it only refers to the output of the compiler. Now, how do I get all these files in there? Okay, I can now simply type them in and create new files via create new file. But normally I don't want that and I don't need that. I have the file stored somewhere else. And now you have two options. Either you copy files from here to your project or any subordinate folder. I try to copy it here. So you can choose copy and OK. And it now has actually copied all the complete sort tree into that file system structure. Maybe you work like, like I do. In that case you have a complete subtree of different sources, systems and you want to keep it as it is, you don't want to replicate it all in your workspace. In this case you can simply put your path in the clipboard and create a new folder. But you don't create a simple folder which contains the files but instead you create a linked folder. This is nothing like a, nothing but a symbolic link as you know it maybe from Unix so I paste in the absolute path here and press finish and I get a folder icon with that small arrow indicating that it is a link. And now I can browse again directly in this folder and use the sources and the files as they are. You can actually, uh, if for example you work with one specific project, you can go to the properties, copy the absolute path and create one more linked folder.
This way you can have your favorite folders or the things you are actually working with at the moment always on the top level which simplifies navigation. So the same thing can appear multiple times in the same uh, structure here. Another way to open uh, folders is also available here. So when you are working with assembler files you can choose to open the source folder or you can choose to open the output folder. In this case this is the same folder because I set it up like this in the preferences. I can also say compile to the default temporary um, directory of your sys operating system. When is this useful? This is useful when you have, like I do, very very many simple files that can run by themselves so you don't need to keep the executable, you don't put the executable somewhere specifically, so you just compile it all to the temp folder and run it from there. Down here you can see this was C temp where it was, was compiled to. The third option to set up the output path is the fixed folder. This is uh, recommended if you for example have folders on your hard drive that are set up as hard drives or drives in your, um, in your emulator. If you do it like this and compile. You see that it's now there and now if I start the emulator I can use DOS to copy it from the H drive if it is configured in the emulator correctly. Well that's it for files and folders for today. See you in the next tutorial. Bye!